Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Thursday, June 5th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. The 24th episode or paroxysm at Kilauea occurred overnight, and we live streamed eight hours of it on Rumble on Magnetic Reversal News. It did not disappoint. So go check it out on X or on Rumble. We also have tropical development times two in the Eastern Pacific, and we're keeping a close eye on Sahara dust meeting Canadian wildfire smoke. Keep calm. It's boom time. Saharan dust will collide with Canadian wildfire smoke in South Carolina soon. Here are tips to stay healthy. If you're noticing smoky haze in the air this week, there is a reason. Smoke from Canadian wildfires and the Sahara dust storm are expected to bring hazy skies across South Carolina and most of the Southeast this week. Folks can anticipate bright sunsets and some slight temperature changes, but the largest concern for some groups is the change in air quality due to the influx of particulates in the air. The U.S. Air Quality Index lists most areas of South Carolina as having moderate air quality as of Wednesday. While this reading is generally acceptable, members of sensitive groups and those who are sensitive to air pollution are encouraged to consider reducing their activity outdoors. So heed the warnings. The good news is that the smoke is reducing across the U.S. as it's moving mostly west and now affecting the United Kingdom. So hopefully that continues or the fires finally go out. A quick look at the severe weather threat right now, live at Tornado HQ. We've got 10 severe weather warnings, including Texas, Kansas, Colorado, and even New York. Seven minutes ago, Pecos and Terrell counties in Texas, a severe thunderstorm warning. Kansas, Clark, Ford, and Kiowa counties, a severe thunderstorm warning. And Colorado, Kiowa County as well. So heed the warnings. Watches and warnings are up. To stay tuned for live updates, click on the audio alerts at tornadohq.com where the live severe weather map is free for all those who want to go get it. The seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook for the eastern Pacific shows that one region we've been showing 80% chance of cyclone formation, and we've got a second disturbance now with a 40% chance. None of these will affect land, and we'll move out here into the Pacific and do basically nothing. And here is the full forecast. We've got severe thunderstorms and heavy rain in the central U.S. Flood warnings, watches, thunderstorm warnings and watches are out, as well as tornado warnings and watches in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. A broad threat of scattered severe thunderstorms and heavy showers will exist across the central and southern high plains into Sunday, including areas well off to the east into the Mid-South and even Tennessee Valley. Smoke from Canadian wildfires will continue to bring unhealthy air quality conditions to portions of the Great Lakes, as well as the Central Plains. Heed the warnings and check out, well, the Fire and Smoke Map version 4.1 to get daily updates. The GFS model is still showing tropical development in the Atlantic sometime this time in the third week of June. Those earlier storms have now left the map. But we'll take a quick look at the severe weather potential moving through the next few days. Here's Friday into Saturday and the weekend. We'll see some pop-up storms here in the central U.S. as well as the northeast in the beginning of the weekend, which will increase through Sunday, fun day. And by Monday, most of those storms will be on the east coast while a secondary line of fronts explodes over Texas. Seismic update. No real quakes of note, normal activity worldwide. Stanley, uh, Idaho continues with aftershocks rocking the region. We did have a, an interesting 4.9 in Ocampo, Mexico. A 5.0 in Papua New Guinea, but worldwide low-level activity. The opposite of low-level activity is Kilauea Volcano's 14th paroxysm. Lava fountaining was spectacular, hundreds of feet in the sky, as we live streamed it overnight while I slept, 
I saw signs of this baby about to erupt. Once again, I started the live stream an hour before the actual fun stuff began. And then an hour in, it started sploshing. And then, well, the fireworks began. And they were spectacular. All different types of lava fountaining throughout the event. And about a hard hour of this type of fountaining. Absolutely spectacular. And you can rewatch the entire live stream, Care of the USGS on X, as well as our Rumble channel. Worldwide Volcano News for June 5th. We've got Swanosima to 5,000 feet. Raung on the list, 11,000 foot blast today. Sokonejima, 6,000 foot puff. Liwotolo to 7,000 feet. Raventador, 14,000 foot blast. Fuego put on quite the show here. New lava flows happening there. Sangay, 20,000 foot blast. Semadu, who knew, now you do. Volcanic ash reported today. Nevada de Ruiz, 20,000 feet. Popo to 19,000 feet. Ibu, eruption reported today. Suanosimo to 6,000. The V3, Kilauea Cam, showing the 24th paroxysm overnight. That has come to a close. Sangay to 24,000 feet. Raung to 13,000 feet. That's increasing. Fuego to 18,000. Raventador on the list. Popo to 21,000. Ibu puffing and passing. Semadu, who knew, now you do 15,000 foot blast there. And Sakonajimo, 6,000 foot puff. Wrapping up the list, we've got Fuego to 21, Nevada de Ruiz to 22, Raventador to 14, and Sangay to 21,000 feet. Quite a list today. Hey, hey. And we have an Aurora alert incoming solar storm could spark auroras, well, as far south as God knows where. And this is because of an incoming solar filament eruption on June 3rd. It's on its way to Earth and could give Aurora chasers a treat. And it is modeled on the WSA Enlil Spiral. So we'll take a look at that and we'll play you the model through. And we can see the 1st, uh, the 2nd of June here, the 3rd of June, and then a filament is going to leave the sun there. It's minor at best. It's actually just a minor perturbation. So I don't imagine anything spectacular at all happening on June 8th. Uh, but there is a G1 geomagnetic storm for the 7th. So take a look at the detailed forecast. That could be the arrival of that filament the 7th into the 8th. Low-level flaring, almost no visible sunspots. Uh, all the active regions have tiny pepper flakes, if I must say. Hey, hey. Solar minimum is in effect as we drop back down to the bottom. Telemetry showing very low level activity on the sun and well, all quiet on the KP. We are down at KP2. Now, when you will see June's strawberry moon will be the lowest full moon in decades. The full strawberry moon, the final full moon, boom, of spring in the Northern Hemisphere will turn full on Wednesday, June 11th, six days from now. However, it will be seen at moonrise on Tuesday, June 10th, as it appears in the east during dusk. It takes its name from the ripening of summer berries in North America during June. It's also the lowest hanging full moon, not only of the year, but since 2006, because of that 18.6 year lunar, major lunar standstill cycle. So make sure you get out and look up at June's strawberry moon. An invisible threat, a swarm of hidden silly city killer asteroids around Venus could one day collide with Earth, according to new simulations. A new study suggests that unidentified co-orbital asteroids around Venus may have the capacity to impact our planet in the future with potentially devastating consequences. However, there is no immediate threat. Leah and I will break down the threat on Cosmic Catastrophe on our Rumble channel Saturday night. We'll also discuss this article. Only 1,280 survived the near extinction event that nearly wiped out humanity one million years ago. Yes, it's true. A dramatic event nearly wiped out all of humanity one million years ago, according to new genetic research. 
uncovering the shocking scale of this near extinction event. The good news is we made it, and I am now making this podcast. You can watch all of this over at Magnetic Reversal News, including the eight-hour live stream of the 24th Paroxysm, the latest update of Cosmic Catastrophe, Are You Prepared for the Geophysical Event?, and then Saturday, the replay of Cosmic Catastrophe, 8 p.m. Mountain Time. A field site in Oregon shows evidence of human occupation 18,000 years ago. Well, all these sites keep getting older and older, and the Clovis first hypothesis is officially dead. Archaeologists from the University of Oregon Museum of Natural and Cultural History have found evidence suggesting humans occupied the Rimrock Drawl rock shelter outside of Riley, Oregon, more than 18,000 years years ago. And this is just one of dozens of site across, sites across North and South America that say, well, the Clovis first hypothesis needs to come to an end. More celestial firebombs. Have you ever heard of the Aretids? Yes, this is a strong meteor shower that lasts from May 22nd to July 2nd each year. But this year, it peaks on June 7th. The Uretids, along with the Zeta Perseids, are the most intense daylight meteor shower of the year. The source of the shower is unknown, but scientists suspect that they come from the asteroid 1566 Icarus. Although the orbit corresponds similarly to 96P Matchholz. First discovered by at the Joe Drell Bank Observatory in England during the summer of 1947, the showers are caused when Earth passes through a dense portion of two interplanetary meteoroid streams, producing an average of 60 shooting stars each hour that originate in the sky from the constellation Aries. This year, you can check it out. This is the appearance in the eastern sky at 5 a.m. on June 7, 2000. So you need to look east from a mid-northern latitude to observe it. And, well, just look above the horizon, well before sunrise. And one of our fans, one of our biggest fans of the channel, has been watching for years, needs some help. You can all help Shay September Stephenson remove her failed dental implement, implants and regain her life. She's raised $2,200 thanks to Leah's last $100 donation. And Matt Stepanovich is running the GoFundMe. All of you people that think you're going to go down to Mexico and get some cheap dental implants, well, this should be your warning. That's exactly what Shay did, and it turned out to be a nightmare. Shay is on a limited income relying on Social Security and Medicaid, which sadly does not cover the removal procedure. She's tried every option, Medicaid providers, free clinics, dental schools. No one has been able to help. She's now at the point where the implants must come out immediately to prevent further damage. She can't even eat any solid food. She's living on a liquid diet. So if you can dig down in your pockets and help out our friend Shay, she ne just needs to get to that $4,000 goal. Just under $1,800, $1,790 to go, and she can get this nightmare resolved. Please help out Che. We would appreciate that. And this weekend on Sunday, we are going to be interviewed by this and that with Josh and, Z and Zach. Yes. A really great opinionated podcast, open-minded Seekers of Truth, their podcast is a no-limits conversation hub where they dive into everything. Check it out on TikTok and all the places podcasts are, Amazon, all those places. This and that with Josh and, with Josh and Zach, we're going to be doing the podcast on Sunday, and I don't know when they put it up, but once we get the info, we'll let you know. So please follow this and that with Josh and Zach over on X for all the latest updates. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please hit the thumbs up, share this video, 
and subscribe to the channel. Half the people listening are unsubscribed and it really helps our channel grow if you just hit the button. Hit the bell and probably won't get notified about anything, but we post every single night on this channel. We've been doing it for a decade. Don't be deceived. Just come over to Oppenheimer Ranch Project on YouTube to get the latest updates every night. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that is a boo. Ding, ding.